Hello again. This is the Rape on Report. I am JW. This is YouTube podcast number three. I took a little time off. I did a short second one after the first program. Took a little time off. Wanted to see what kind of reception we were going to have. Uh, it's now been nine days and we reached 100 views on there, so that's looking pretty good. I want to thank everybody for taking time to bother listening. What we're going to try to dive into today um, involves some sensitive material, uh, which isn't really hard to do in today's political climate. So with that being said, I offer a warning. This production shows some images that just may turn your stomach. And the subject that we're going to talk about this week is the death of the Democrat Party. Now, I, I don't mean death as in gone. I mean death as in it's not going to be what you now know. Uh, as a 55-year-old man, I can easily say the Democrat Party today is not the same Democrat Party it was the year I was born, which was 1963. And I was born uh, six weeks before John F. Kennedy was killed. He was quite a bit different of a Democrat than what we see today, but that's for other stories. I, I believe this death is coming for a multitude of reasons. I'm not going to try to boil it down to one. I'm not going to say this is the number one reason, this is the primary reason, because it, it, it's just a great big hodgepodge in today's world. Where I think a big problem is coming into the Democrat Party is things and maneuvers, placements, uh, in addition to the personnel. You know, the old Democrat Party that a lot of people are used to, depending on how long you've been following politics. You got people in the old crew, you know, yeah, Pocahontas here, uh, Elizabeth Warren. Uh, got good old uh, ex-president Billy Clinton. And of course, who could ever forget Dianne Feinstein? That's what Hillary should be wearing right now, but, you know, that's, again, another story for another time. Got this guy here, Bernie the Socialist. Owns three houses. <sighs> it, just, it, it just boggles my mind what people fall for. Good old Al Gore. You know, he's been around for quite a while now. Selling his global warming stuff while he owns property right next to the ocean. But he's worried about rising sea level. He's got a giant mansion. Oh my goodness. Could you imagine an electric bill for this guy? And he's worried about global warming. And of course we have Miss Nazi Pelosi. Never to be forgotten in today's political Democrat machine. She's been up there probably 30 some years. Mr. Joe Biden. Former Vice President under Barack Hussein Obama. But let's just say he'll be coming up again again in the program later. Mr. Chuck Schumer. Boy, he's a, there's a, there, there's a face and a voice, you know, if you're paying attention at all. And then we move into new, what I call the newer crew. This is relatively new. This is brand new, depending on how far back you want to go back. Well, we have Mr. Obama here who comes onto the political scene somewhere. It's like 2003, 2004, I forget exactly what. And of course, his wife, Michelle Obama. And then we have this guy. He's not been around all that long. This is Mr. Keith Ellison, if I remember correctly, former uh, Attorney General of the state of Minnesota. I'm not positive on that. I know he was also in Congress or may currently still be. I don't keep up with the uh, leftists too much. Miss Kamala Harris, she's another one. She's a newer thorn in our side. Christian Gilgabrandt, she's another one. Man, it's just... Mr. Cory Booker. Wow. Um, again, if memory serves me correctly, I believe he was governor of New Jersey. Not positive on that, but he's also in our Congress. This guy. Wow. I'm telling you what, he's going to come up again later, but it, this is one of those guys that the left uh, occasionally throw under the bus, Beto O'Rourke. Not familiar with who this person is. I, I, I can't think of her name right off the top of my head, but I do know that she is a potential presidential candidate. Mr. Yang here, also a potential potential Democrat candidate. This is another one of our freshman Congress women who recently did what she could initially to get the voting age lowered to 16. There's a crop of probably five plus million 
new voters if they could get that one through. Most of them Democrat. This guy's running for president on the Democrat side, too. Again, his name escapes me right now. This guy, um, Julian, Julian something, I, I forget exactly what it is, but yeah, he's also running for Democrat president. Uh, Marianne Williamson also running for Democrat president. Tulsi Gabbard, or Gibbard, or whatever it is, she's also running. This guy's also running. And of course, we have another one of our freshman Congress members, uh, Ilhan Omar, Oman or something, I'm not real sure. Um, she's the one that's recently been in trouble for what well, they said anti-semitic stuff here we have miss Talith's uh, Talib or whatever it is um, another freshman Congress member, also a Muslim. We'll be getting into that more as we go by. And then we have Miss Alexandria Ocasio Cortez. She has been in the spotlight since way before actually taking her Congress seat that she won in New York. This this is one that she she's she's like the newer Nancy Pelosi. She's a gift that keeps on giving. Where she comes from, and not that this is anything new in politics, but uh, the way that this story came out uh, really. Um, demonstrates to the public how a lot of this is done. Mrs. Cortez here, uh, she was not somebody who grew up with political uh, aspirations, pursuing government. Not, not, not really at all. And she did start to get involved with some community affairs. And then there was this company, we'll just call it what it is, a special interest group, a company called Justice Democrat. And what they did was uh, they basically held auditions, you know, like they do out in Hollywood all the time for movies. But they held auditions and what they wanted was they wanted people to nominate uh, different community leaders uh, as such from around the country and last report I read there was somewhere in the neighborhood of 10,000 that were nominated nationwide. Miss Cortez here was the winner. She was chosen. So I'm sure she was chosen for a lot of reasons. One in particular is she was the one that they deemed would best march to their drumbeat. So she's kind of uh, beholding to this organization in this outfit. I'm not saying they completely control every move she makes and approves every word she says, but they're there, they're involved. And if they had 10,000 nominees, you know what kind of reach this organization has? Just think about that. Not even in Congress six months, not even in Congress 100 days, and there's already a finance scandal. A million dollars somehow gets shuffled out of her campaign account into, I'll call it a slush fund, probably to help reward many of those that helped her get to this position. Again, what she did isn't new. The way it's come out in the public, uh, people need to start paying it a little bit more attention. We get to the heart here of what I'm talking about when I talk about the death of the Democrat Party. Again, I'm not talking about it going into oblivion. What I'm talking about is transformation, a transformation that has long been in the works already. Again, this isn't new. There's been some recent improvements to help this along. To begin with, when I talk about Islam, if we go through history, uh, we see the rise of Islam coming up out of Mecca, Medina, conquering, you know, what today we call the Middle East, good part of northern Africa going all the way up and through Europe up until the dissolvement of the Ottoman Empire right around 1920 somewhere in that area with the introduction of the country of Turkey again coinciding with the death of the Ottoman Empire uh, Islam spread through warfare plain and simple they spread through warfare well with the dissolving of the Ottoman Empire the controlling forces within Islam had to re-examine their approach and their tactics and their methods. And what we see since the um, end of the Ottoman Empire is a lot more guerrilla style tactics. Um, they're not necessarily marching across the uh, 
Sahara or Serengeti or coming across the oceans on horseback to slaughter and pillage and rape and destroy like they always have. But they had to get a little smarter with the times. And again, as we go through a lot of countries today that are pretty much just say it Islamic, you know, a lot of people want to argue, oh, there's no such thing as an Islamic country. Yes, there is. There's many of them. But that's a deflection tactic and argument that people like to use. But one of the things that even precedes this this rapid growth of Islam that we are seeing in the West, to an argument that people like to use, but one of the things that even precedes this this rapid growth of Islam that we are seeing in the West is within the Democrat Party, within the liberal institution, they're going through a severe identity crisis. These people don't know who they are, where they're going, what they stand for, or for how long. These people, they don't really know what a lot of deep friendships are because when it comes to these political hot buttons, they'll, they'll throw you under the bus. They don't care. Uh, you got to look at this. Just look at this list here. I mean, you got white privilege, jihad, health care, misogyny, uh, Berkeley homophobia, the Clinton sexism, Islamophobia, slavery, free education, borders, bigotry, carbon tax, Karl Marx, LBJ, Jim Crow, Marxism, transgender, socialism, infanticide, Louis Farrakhan. It's just these people don't know where they are from one day to the next because a lot of times the marching orders can change overnight depending on events somewhere in the world. One of those changes that's been going on and I did not create the meme you're looking at here and I definitely believe this transition was beginning long even before Mr. Barack Obama showed up in the spotlight you know just take it with a grain of salt but this is what's happening and again I mentioned back when we had the dissolving of the Ottoman Empire how Islam had to change its tactics more in line with modern times most of what the world sees today on the visible on the surface is Islam is a religion of peace and tolerance and love and they respect women wow if you believe that and you're gullible what happens is as we come forward in time from the uh, breakup of the ottoman empire the introduction of turkey uh we can come through world war one world war two and we we start to look at places like iran iraq afghanistan pakistan Libya, Syria, Jordan, Lebanon. What happens is Islam today, more than ever, they enter through institutions of division within countries. Always, always, always aligning themselves with the political left. Always, in all cases. Again, it, it doesn't really matter the country. It doesn't really matter the time frame. It doesn't matter who the leader is, and it doesn't matter that people have to get lost in all kinds of minor details. You see this? When you look at these pictures here, what I want you to think of, and what I want you to remember for later recollection this was a normal scene 1950s 1960s and early 1970s in places like iran iraq egypt pakistan afghanistan something changed and it wasn't that these people were suddenly becoming muslims it wasn't that there had precipitated this great big conversion. Not at all. What happened was these places went from pictures like this, every bit Western lifestyle, to all of a sudden we have women in places. This is a this is from a demonstration in Iran. Uh, other, of course, countries throughout the Islamic world today protesting. Protesting what this whether it is the head scarf whether it is the head scarf the face covering or the full body bag what these people experienced was hardline extremist islamic warfare within the culture here we are looking at a picture from the barbary wars united states at war with morocco tunisia algeria libya right coinciding real close in time with our dependence, independence, I should say, battle of our independence. Something changed again with their warfare because again, this was pretty much standard Islamic warfare was horseback. This is what they look like today. This is what we're told 
they look like today. The ideology never changes. What they want never changes. What changes are simply the times and the players and the tools. Even though we are told that Islam is a peaceful people and that the overwhelming majority of Muslims are peaceful people, and I will give them that. The overwhelming majority of Muslims are peaceful people. But that makes them Islam's number one target, actually. They're apostates. Not only just as punishment for things that they've done, these images that you're looking at here help to show the world what Islam is. These are not radicalists. These are not extremists. These are not people that don't understand the Quran or the Hadiths or the Sunnah or Sharia law. That's what happens to you in some places for stealing or whatever. You shred your fingers. Stone you to death. Cut off your hands. Cut off your arms. Cut off your head. Or the infamous acid attacks. This is done in large measure to women who are raped, women who stand up and want to break free from the oppression that is Islam on women. So again, a lot of this comes through not just open warfare on a battlefield, but it comes through cultural civilization jihad. There's just one example. McDonald's and Pizza Hut and Kentucky Fried Chicken refuse Muslim demands to serve halal meats Muslims enraged. Why do these businesses have to conform to Islam? Why can't Islam create their own businesses? Why can't they eat what's available, what's around? Because they do not assimilate. They take over. Please be courteous to your Muslim neighbors. Many Muslims live in this area and dogs are considered filthy in Islam. Please keep your dogs on a leash and away from the Muslims who live in this country. Are you kidding me? Don't try this in America. Sharia controlled zone. Well, we pretty much got a few of them up in uh, Dearborn, Stan, Michigan. Uh, there's a couple of these around the country. There's a lot of them over in Europe now where if you're a Westerner and you drift off and you wind up in one of these places, you're not going to like the experience. Sharia police. Well, okay, you know, uh, by large measure, this is sometimes exaggerated in the media, but they do exist, so let, let's just be real. And they want them everywhere. A lot of times they're simply introduced as, well, they're just there to police their fellow Muslim. No, they're not. Here's another one. You see that there? That, that That's a man. That's a man in that body bag. I don't know what in the world. Burka or Nick Job or Hit Job or whatever it is. That's a man. And there's been many terrorist acts performed by men wearing these glad bags. But usually, here's how it's presented. Isn't that nice? Isn't that pretty? Aren't these fashionable? It lets a woman show her face, but she's still covering her head. And we even have the full body burkinis. Isn't that nice? You're still able to see the face, but they're completely covered from head to toe. Along the line, something changed here in America when it comes to Islam. That something's got to be addressed. This guy again, Mr. Keith Ellison, was almost the Democrat um, chair. He's a Muslim. Miss Tlaib, again, a freshman congresswoman, she's a Muslim. Ilhan Omar or Oman, whatever, she's another Muslim. This, she gets away with this. She insults Jews and plays dumb, and then they pass resolutions criticizing or condemning her critics. CARE. Look it up. CARE for the uh, Council for the American Islamic Relations. They come right out and tell you they're here to take over. Democrats are becoming Islam's party. Yeah, they will be the dominant force in the Democratic Party, I would say within two to three elections. Uh, as long as you remember that if ever you you are getting involved in politics, you have to be very careful that your leader is for Allah. You don't get involved in politics because it's the American thing to do. You get involved in politics because politics are the weapons to use in the cause of Islam. Again, Keith Ellison. Democrats support Islam. Islam hates everything that liberals support, including homosexuality and feminism. The only thing that unites them truly is their hatred for us conservatives. It's a war against us. Muslims projected to be the fastest growing religious group. They're just out populating every other race on the planet. Muslims hate dogs, Jesus, pork, beer, and bikinis, and freedom of speech, so why are they here in America to take over? But remember, they always enter through liberal causes. It's time for Americans to stand up and figure out if we're going to let this flag continue to fly over what we hope to preserve somewhat of a free people. We're going to continue to let these people sandbag us 
stomping on our flag and bringing in every form of disease and filth and anti-American thing there is. Nancy Pelosi pushing rights for illegal immigrant newcomers. That's the new buzzword. Can't call them immigrants. Can't call them illegal immigrants. Can't call them illegal aliens. They're all newcomers. Here's your freshman class. That's your freshman class in Congress. Look around. See which ones are maybe your representative. Remember these faces. These are a lot of the button pushers that are still pretty active today that are helping to just tear things apart. Just tear things apart. These are the people that work on the downside of rape on the rise and fall of nations. They allow all them faces right there. They're all running for president in the Democrat Party, and that's not all of them. Neopoliticide. Ideas, interests, beliefs, and actions within politics and other special interests designed to further indoctrinate and galvanize loyal constituents but also to alienate and weed out the less desirable. Such things are what actually helped create the walk-away movement, where a bunch of people walk, just walked away from the Democrat Party because they realized they no longer served the values that they said that they did. And a lot of times, again, the Democrats will simply throw their own under the bus. There's a liberal identity crisis going on for sure, and while they're all scrambling in their own little circles trying to figure out what's going on, it's causing this death of the Democrat Party. I... I you know, we have to be considerate of everything that is around us. We have to be cognizant of everything that is around us. We have to be informed of everything that's going on around us. If people don't understand what's going on with this transition, uh, just of Islam. Islam is going to take over the Democrat Party. And they will eventually form their own political party. And at that time, the Democrats may try to piece something together. In the long run, I hope more and more people are simply paying attention. Because we got big problems coming in this country. And the next couple of elections, you know, you hear people say that all the time. Well, the next couple of elections. But I'm serious. Um, we now have dirty, corrupt, openly corrupt people in our, in our freshman Congress class. Openly corrupt. They're rubbing it in our faces. They don't care. But something's going to be done or there's... There's going to be payback. It's not going to be pretty. Uh, again, I know history. There's a war coming. There is a war coming. And I, I don't think it can be stopped. I don't think it can be stopped. There's too many forces pulling America apart. But again, that's one of the reasons why I started this Rayphone Report. It's one of the reasons why I'm trying to become a little more familiarized with the blog world with the podcast world because i'm used to doing two to three hour podcasts and debate got to get into a system where you're dealing with singular topics or just short bursts of information because people get bored listening to me talk because i can talk for hours uh, <laughs> so i understand that but again I, I you know i hope you're paying attention i hope you're waking other people up and i really hope you are enjoying this program and i hope you do come back and listen to us again uh, tell your friends about us don't forget to like don't forget to share don't forget to give me a thumbs up don't forget to hit that notification bell talk about us in your social media accounts if you have any questions for us you can email us at rayfonreport at gmail.com. Don't forget to stop by the website itself, rayfonreport.com. You can also find us on Facebook. You can find us on Twitter. If you do the like, the share, the subscribe, and all of the above, you can uh, donate to us so we can get this thing maybe advertised in a little wider market. You can help us out through our PayPal account or through our Rayphone account. All of our contact links, again, are underneath all of our videos. Again, pay attention, read, research. Don't fall for a lot of the distraction media. Just don't, because that's all it's there for is distraction. Again, this is the third program. Uh, we'll be putting out the fourth uh, real soon here. That's going to be another, uh, I think, interesting one. But uh, again, I am working towards being a little better at making shorter parts or parcels of information for you to go through. Until we see you again next time around, this is JW. This is the Rayfond Report. God bless you and God bless America.